Oh, how is it going? Um, yeah, let's just pray before I give any message for the Lord to speak, not, not for me to speak. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. I just ask that your Holy Spirit speak through me and open our ears to hear your words and uh, open our hearts to understand your message and our eyes to see the truth, Father, and let the truth set us free from all wickedness and evil deeds and, and the sins of the world. Father, wash us all from the worldly sins that we have committed. Father, wash us, our hearts, to be pure and humble and be, 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 be humble before the Lord at all costs. Father, I just ask that your spirit please lead us and lead us all to the truth and help us to be hearing your voice and be able to talk to you freely and to be able to know you on earth as it is in heaven, Father. I just ask that you please lead us into the truth and Father, let the truth set us free. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All the glory unto God. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about what must I do continually to be saved. This came up while I was praying, so I believe it's from the Lord. What must I do to be continually to be saved? Because there is no such thing as one saved, always saved mentioned in the Bible. It says, oh, be careful that you do not fall away from the faith that you once were you know, saved with. It says, do not fall away from it. Do not forsake the Lord or His ways. Right? And we know in the scriptures, although there must be many arguments whether you're once saved or always saved, you know, but what I have learned was that you're not always saved because God showed me. I used to believe once saved, always saved, but um, until God showed me Himself, scriptures, where unless your righteousness surpasses those of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, and also while I sinned, uh, an angel came to warn me and with the judgment that I would receive in heaven if I were to go to die that day. You know, I, I, was, I was scared. There's no way to run from the judgment. And it's going to come upon each man. And each man is accountable for what they do to God by themselves. It's directly one relationship. Nobody's going to defend for you. Or oh, you think Jesus is going to defend? Well, Jesus is the one who's going to judge you according to His words. So you need to be able to um, show your faith, you know, by you following the Lord. You cannot do any works apart from God. We're all going to be like dry branches apart from attached to the vine. Being attached to the vine, we are going to bear no fruit. And it's essential that we have this strong relationship with God or else we're all going to fall away. Uh, recently, there's a lot of snow falling in America. I mean, it's, it's November, and it started from o October 31st when we prayed against Halloween, and then, and it had uh, a lot of bad weather in Chicago. But now it's like below below zero in, in November. 19 years of my life living in Chicago. This is the first time I've ever seen snow this early, and this much, and this cold. And it's 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 just it's a bad sign that there's gonna be, I believe, a spiritual winter coming, even a famine, um, maybe in America, so I think you guys should get prepared physically as well as spiritually. So physically, you know, get yourself ready with rice and wheat, the stuff that won't rot, you know, have some beans ready, dry beans and stuff like that ready, you know, just in case, just in case you, you might need it and, you know, have some food ready and water ready. So that you, you make sure that, you know, you're safe. Because, you know, the famine cam came to uh, Israel for seven years. Remember that? And Joseph, they're all prepared because they heard from God already, you know. Joseph had already interpreted the Pharaoh's dream of famine coming. Uh, so they already prepared. And you need to prepare too. Uh, because I really don't know. Uh, probably next year... Uh, many bad stuff will happen to America and we know all things are coming because Jesus Christ is coming soon and we need to be always prepared we don't know the time or the day but we know the seasons and looking at all the signs of the world and stuff like that we know we are in the season of uh, the Lord's return so 
Let's get prepared and what must I do to be continue to be saved? Number one, always praying. Now praying is not just one side you talk. You need to also be able to wait upon the Lord after you've done your words and praying. Wait upon for the voice of God and the voice of God will be spoken in your heart if you have received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you don't know, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, study upon that. But once you have received the Holy Spirit, you're going to be able to hear His voice because my sheep hear my voice and they what? Follow me. And remember, uh, uh, I'll go with into it later. But by, like, second thing is reading His Word because Jesus Christ is the Word. And when He speaks to you, He will speak from the Scriptures, from His own words, He will speak for God is Word. You know, and then, of course, the Word of God is His Spirit. So read a lot of the Word of God so that He will go through the Scriptures and reveal them to you and speak to you through the Scriptures many times. Okay? Now, a lot of people don't do this part, but do fasting. Fasting. Now, Bible says fasting and praying, you know, and then, you know, Jesus Christ is not here. And those who follow God, you should start fasting. Now, if you want to know how to fast, search up the video, uh, How to Fast Properly Christians, you know, or How to Fast, and type my name, Gino Arc. Um, then you should be able to find a video on how to fast properly. Okay, now, so we got the three things covered, praying, Bible reading, fasting, you know, right? And then now you need to have repentance. Repent always. There's always room or things that you need to repent of. And we need to get our garments clean and ready. Even if you did not spend 10% of your time with the Lord, praying and seeking Him daily, then you have sinned because you have went against the first commandments of loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and your know, body and strength, right? So you have not been doing that first commandment, the golden commandment, loving your God above all things. If you love your game above all things, you'd have played that two, three hours. If you love movies more than God, you'd have done watching two, three hours of movies and, and not have spent time with the Lord. Now you have to put God above all things. And do not love the things of the world or the lust of the world because the love of the Father is not going to be in you once you participate in these uh, worldly activities, right? Because what you see and what you hear will affect you. Now, uh, that's number four, repenting. Always repent. And we have to be clean before the Lord. Every single lie, every single tiny bit of haughtiness, anger, provoke, you know, something that is not of love, having no patience, lacking patience, gentleness, kindness, being loving to one another, being kind and gentle toward one another. I mean, we, we all need to repent. I need to repent. I have to change. We all need to change. And uh, that's what God expects us to be like. Okay, so the next one is, you know, having fellowship, gathering to pray together. Not just having fellowship so you guys can go watch a movie or eat together, but having fellowship to do godly things. Like, you know, you can do fellowship with Bible study. I mean, Bible study, as you see the day approaching, um, gather, gather to pray, Bible says. Paul says, gather to pray. As you see the day of Christ approaching, pray, gathering, pray. So have prayer meetings, pray for one another. I mean, get strengthened in, in the fellowship with strong Christians. And, and if you see weak Christians, help them out. Warn them, take them out of the ditch that they're falling into. Take them out, encourage one another as it is called today. And, you know, uh, exhort one another, rebuke one another if it needs to be rebuked. Um, like if they're committing sins, for example, and you need to tell them, hey, you go in that way, you cannot go to heaven. You know? To tell them, you know, tell them the truth before it's too late. Okay, um, now the, the other thing is evangelize. Use your time to evangelize as much as possible because that's the only thing that really going to be left is what you have done for Christ and He'll reward you according to what you've done. So if you don't know how to evangelize, share the video. Share other people's preachings videos on your Facebook, on Twitter, or whatever, your phone. You know, send them text messages, 
or watch this video or that. I mean, there's so many ways to evangelize. Why aren't you doing? You can go to our website, armyofjesus.com, go to evangelize page, download the tracks, and leave it on people's cars, leave it on people's homes. You know, download those tracks, print them out, upside and the backside, and then give it on to the people. There's so many ways to evangelize. What are, why aren't you doing it? Are you hiding your talent on the ground so that you be called later by God, you wicked and lazy servant? You know, you, you're, you're afraid and you hid the talent that God gave you? Hey, if God gave you feet and arms, you can evangelize. If you can walk around and, and talk, hey, you can evangelize. God gave you the talent, the ability to do so. Do as much as possible and multiply. Now, uh, you must seek to do God's will. And everybody's calling is different. And in order to know God's will, you need to be fasting and praying, so that's included in there. But seek God's will continually, you know? And you must also grow continually in your faith. If your faith isn't growing, but rather stagnant or going down or something, you're backsliding. You're, you're backsliding. You know, a Christian needs to be continuing to go up to the hill, hill, the mount, the holy hill of God, and continue to go and be better and better, better than before. You need to continue to grow in your personality, in 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 your character, in your in your walk with God, in your faith. I mean, you need to continue to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. I mean, getting to know His voice better, hearing His voice better. You need to grow in the Lord. So. Grow continually, and in, and increase your increase your faith and in your knowledge. You know, the only way to grow continually is continue to picking up your cross. Jesus says, if you want to follow after me, pick up your cross and follow me. You know, you need to deny yourself, deny your fleshly deeds, wants, deny the devils that are tempting you to sin. You know, the devil thought comes into your mind, reject it in Jesus' name. Get out, you devil, in Jesus' name. I command you, get out of me. Continually, continually. And so that you do it in faith. And God will be there helping you. Because the kingdom of God is not here and there. It's in you. Jesus is in you. Talk to me. Hey, how are you doing? Lord, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, who's here? Jesus, you're here. You know, Father, you're here. Communicate. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Meditate upon His Word. I mean, close your eyes and pray. And after you pray, just wait upon the Lord and He'll start revealing things, you know, through visions, dreams, uh, talking to you supernaturally. This God is a supernatural God. I mean, He will talk to you in His own terms. Now, the last thing I want you to do be is be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine. You know, don't fill your emptiness with the things of the world. Fill it with the Holy Spirit. The only way to be filled is continuing the fellowship with the Lord, praying, reading Bible. I mean, people only read the Bible. I really suggest you to start praying more because Jesus prayed a lot. And He gave examples of Him going to the mountain to pray always and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, that's basically it. If you do all these things daily, uh, you'll be good when you repent of all sins and be cleansed daily, daily, daily. Ask God, what am I doing wrong? Reveal unto me my secret sins so that I may be able to confess those sins and change myself. Because repentance is not saying that I'm just sorry. It's not just saying I'm sorry. It's turning away, willing to turn away from the things that you're involved in. When God reveals you, hey, these are your sins. You need to be obedient children and do not be disobedient and follow the devil continually. Right? So refuse, reject, smoking, drinking, you know, fornicating, watching porn, sleeping before marriage, these kind of stuff. You need to let go. You need to let go. How? Continue to fight the temptations. Rebuke the devil. Fight, fight, fight. Read the Bible. Pray. I mean, just grab unto God and cry out unto the Lord because the Bible says, cry out unto me and I'll hear from heaven. Right? So cry out unto Him. Cry out with your voice. You know, with your heart, from your spoken heart, cry out unto God. And God knows you. God knows you. We can't, there's no way to deceive God. 
God knows all your hearts that is filled with wickedness and evil, but He's willing to cleanse you and take you as son and willing to change you. Just be willing to be changed like a little child humbling themselves before the Lord. And the most humble one will be the greatest in heaven. So humble yourselves before the Lord. Do what He tells you to do and you should be fine. Okay, those who only refuse to follow God, they are the ones going to be refused in the end by God and be sent to hell. No matter how much they cried before, no, ma no matter how much you, know, you served the Lord before, if God cuts you off, you're cut off. So, I mean, let's pay attention to now. You know, we don't have much time, so let's use all our life. Give your life to God totally, and He will change you. All right, so God bless you guys. And have a blessed day. And Jesus loves you. He wants you to become His. So come after Him. There's nothing to lose. Only things to gain. In Jesus' name, God bless you.